All right, welcome to a market update. This particular video is going to span over a few charts. It's just my ideas, sorry, my thoughts on the markets in general. Now, I did put out that video about the Dow Jones and how this is looking like a top. Um, I did give you the levels to watch out for, but I just want to talk a little bit about what I see happening, right? So if this is a top, it's not your regular top. Like a lot of the times tops happen, they happen in a five wave up, five wave down manner. Now that will probably happen, but it's not like a wave one followed by a five wave move down. To me, this top is a corrective top, right? So this is not Elliott wave, but if you were looking at Elliott wave, they usually say, well, an AB is an irregular top. Well, Elliott wave is shit and an irregular top can also be an ABCD, right? So this is what I'm seeing here, an ABCD top, right? So the top here is taking its time. I think it's taking its time for a reason, right? Now we had the Corona pandemic bullshit that happened, right? Now that took oil to zero, right? It had devastating repercussions for the economy, which we still haven't recovered from yet. What I think that this D wave bounce is, is a hope. It's like a, it's like a Hail Mary, the stimulus how mary that everything is going to be just fine and we're going to go to the freaking moon because the economy is strong uh except there's a lot of problems with that argument right especially when it comes to the data that they keep fudging the numbers on and keep reporting absolute bs numbers that are inaccurate they can't even gauge inflation accurately anymore because they keep fudging those numbers too they fudge everything. Everything is completely fabricated and fraudulent. I believe it's fraudulent, right? And it's only going to make things worse for people because they never want to prepare anyone for anything, right? I mean, it's politics. They never want to tell you that shit's about to hit the fan because, oh, we messed up. Either they don't know, they know, and they don't care. They don't care about people. They're going to make money off people. They want to stay in power. They will just basically try and do everything they can to stay in power, etc. Right? Why? Why would they give a shit about the the little guy? Right? But no, nobody cares about the little guy. So what I think is going to happen here is that this top is going to basically be too complicated for most people to understand. But because I've been looking at these patterns, developed my own methodology for years, to me, it looks like a basic correction with a wave E that's going to be devastating as hell for this market. The wave E is going to destroy this market, right? And all markets across the board, right? Now, before I move on to a few other things I want to talk about, I want to also show you the Australian stock market chart because this one has a bit of a different twist to this, right? So basically the Dow Jones, it's a long-term pattern. It started in 62, went all the way up to where we are now, but it really did top out in 2018, right? That was the top of this entire move. That's my belief, right? I've been looking at these patterns over and over again since I last posted that video, just to find any flaws, any mistakes, and I cannot find any, right? This is a very elusive pattern that means something very important, right? And, and also price has really gone into a wedge in this pattern. Like it's really just wedging out. You can't see it, but it's there. Um, trend line to the top of wave three, right? Uh, trend line two to four. It's a wedge. Now price is sticking within this wedge. And so I, basically I said we have two waves left. We have a wave E and a C and we're done. Now, if we go over to the all ordinaries in Australia, 
right? We made since 87, because in 80, in the 87 crash in, a, in the Australian stock market, this actually marked the start of wave one, right? So that's why this pattern is smaller, but 07 was actually the top of wave one, not 2018. So it was like, went for 10 more years in the Dow Jones. But yet this is an A, B, C. The Corona C is still C, right? Look at that. The Corona C is still C, even though this topped in 07. How funny is that? And the D wave is the same D wave that we're seeing at the highs. So the C and the D are the same at the highs, but the A and the B were, it took longer. So why would that be the case? It's because it just, the, the Dow Jones is a bigger pattern, right? So when I short the shit out of the Dow Jones, I, I'd prefer, well, I'd prefer to short the Dow Jones <laughs> rather than the Australian market because I reckon it's going to be more brutal in the Dow Jones. Or actually the, the ticker symbol, I don't know what it shorts, but it shorts the American uh, stock markets. I don't know exactly which one, but the patterns are very similar, so I can't tell. I'll talk more about that as we move along over the next, I don't know, a few months, whatever. It's not important right now. The thing is, this is a market update and I'm just telling you my thoughts here. I'm, I'm giving them to you. Um, I think that, yeah, this is a very important signal that we are actually looking for a corrective wave E pullback across at least these two markets, right? So it's not like it's just another correction because the Australian stock market is not looking at it that way. In fact, it's a major correction since 07 that's now aligning more with the Dow Jones. So therefore it's going to be closer, uh, more correlated moving forward because, well, the shit's about to hit the fan in a synchronized global manner. Okay, so that's the thing that is really intriguing right now. The other thing I want to talk about is Bitcoin, right? So Bitcoin, I want to keep this real simple, right? Well, Bitcoin topped out at the same time as the Dow Jones. We have an A, B, C, D, right? So there is no difference, right? So if, one market relates to the other, relates to the other. At the end of the day, everything is correlated, right? Everything is correlated in this market. And besides, Bitcoin came out at the top of this market, right? 08 was the beginning of the freaking end. So I believe this is the top of the market. This is the first wave for Bitcoin. Now, Bitcoin came out at the top of the market. It doesn't mean if the market crashes 90% that this is going to go down below the start, that's not what I'm saying, right? What I'm saying is the correction will be severe, right? If the Dow Jones collapses 90%, you could probably guess that Bitcoin will go down a lot more than just what the Corona move did, right? It's just, it's just a pattern, right? A, B, C, D, and we're at the top of that, right? We're at the top. Yes, the top is a is a crazy top. It's pretty big, but it's getting weaker, right? It's it's not really moving at breakneck speeds, and and I suppose this type of pattern is giving people the you know the feeling that it that it is that that it will, and that to me, um, I think that's just a buying climax, and I think that it's just a little bit crazy and a little bit sad if you fall for the the hype because although this pattern may go higher um it, it may also just top out here too and i know that uh cryptos tend to top out ahead of the stock market but at this point i don't i don't want to make any kind of calls like that um at this point I'm not making that call yet, right? I am going to probably put out more Bitcoin analysis moving forward. 
But at this stage, I really just want to wait and see what happens at this top here because this could be a top, right? This could be a double top, right? Double, triple, whatever the hell, right? Now, I want to head over to the XLM chart just so I could show you what I posted about a few days ago, right? Uh, I posted a couple of charts that said, hey, look, this is just a zigzag pattern, same as XRP. Right, the XRP pattern is exactly the same. This is the first time I've actually put out um, an idea that basically says that both coins are making the exact same pattern, right? And I labeled both of these downward movements as basically five wave moves with the C wave incomplete, right? Now, this is okay, except the only thing I don't like about this particular count is that if there's a collapse coming, uh, XLM would have to be extremely strong to only fall down to this 0 0.02 level. Could it do it? It might. Um, we don't know. And this would really show us that XLM has a lot of possibility for upside potential um, if it happens to grind down during this period of time, which could take a long time. It could take a year to grind from where it is now down to the target, right? It could, I don't know, right? All I know is that if this isn't, if this is a wave A, well, the, the waves in, indicate that it could be, right? And part of that reasoning is because it also fits very closely with the XRP chart. Right, right there. It's the only count that fits both coins exactly the same, except XRP is in wave two, not wave four. Right, XRP has been way more resilient than XLM, but it doesn't mean that it's not heading down toward the target. Right, it just means that it'll kind of have a little bit more weakness moving forward in order to get to that target. But, but that's assuming that that's an A wave and it's nothing else, right? So if we have a collapse in the market, like I said, can this be so resilient as to keep its trajectory? And I think there's something behind that uh, potentially given, you know, its nature and what it's for and, you know, the type of, um, utility that people talk about XRP having, you know, as being part of the new system or the new financial system, same as XLM, etc. Could this be a sign? And I think that if we do see some wild action in the markets that really does take it down to extremely low levels, um, then that would really just prove itself to me and I'd buy it. I'd buy the shit out of it. I think it'd be worth buying. To, it, it would prove its resilience in the face of adversity like a collapse. Wow. Most coins, I think, will probably go to zero. This is why I'm going to stop putting out videos on a lot of these coins that have limited data, basically data only from like 2020, 2021. I really just don't want to report on those anymore. I think it's pointless. I think a lot of them will crash to zero. I think they'll be wrecked during this collapse. Um, and I don't know, some of them might still be there. Some of them may not. I don't know which ones they are until that happens. Okay. So just going back to the Dow Jones chart, cause this is a very, this is a very important uh, piece of analysis that I've put out recently. It's, it's just, it's ridiculously critical for you to understand that yes, it's a very bearish idea, right? We could basically block down all the way to, you know, 90% crash on this one, right? It could be absolutely devastating, but it would only just be another cycle that will continue moving forward, right? Because we've had many of those cycles. I don't know if you've ever read the book, The Fourth Turning. They talk about this repetitive cycle that happens. And we've basically gone through all those manias, all those different 
the stages of that site of, of those four cycles that occur and we're basically at you know the 80 year peak now and this fits perfectly with that idea and it's not necessarily exactly related to my waves right but it definitely did start at the bottom of the great depression and it's been you know about you know over 80 years right so i think we're overdue for this and i think it's just another way that the market kind of resets itself ready for the next move up right it's like a forest fire uh they might they may not be pretty but they're necessary to burn the old basically flush out old uh debt and excess excess basically and make way for the new uh growth in in the system basically get it get rid of the old and bring in the new right and we have a lot of uh boomers that are basically basically coming to the end of their life cycle and you know the new generation will be a new cycle etc all that sort of thing but this is just how i'm seeing this all all these different various factors sort of align to to make a lot of sense why this would happen right like i said we have these levels here if we have this wave e correction that comes down 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 and then breaks this level this 2000 and you know 16 slash 15 you know uh, support then this thing's going to go lower and, and after that i don't see any support left in this market um at all at all right because this is the only thing that would suggest higher prices like maybe an extended way five right because remember these are fractal patterns right and as we as we can see back here wave three was extended right so you know the the old elliott wave rule says that if wave three is the longest wave five will be similar in length to wave one right now this is not elliott wave but that i've seen that happen that, that that's kind of true now wave one is kind of similar already to wave five right so that's great but what happens if this corrects and moves higher well that's the thing that level will tell us if that's true or not if we break that 15,000 level forget about it it's not going any higher so that's why i talk about that level but the funny thing is though if we if we go down to that level at all we've already broken out of that wedge right and that it's there's too many things telling me if we break out of that wedge you go down that low this thing's game over it's going to go down 90 percent, right you remember what they say about markets on the way down it's like catching an elevator on the way up it's like climbing the stairs right markets always crash a lot harder than you know a lot quicker than what it took to go up so would this be absolutely devastating absolutely would it take very long no what about the recovery? Well, well, what if it's wave three, then it will bounce pretty hard at some point, right? It won't be like, I, I, I don't know. Like, I mean, look at what happened back in 1987, right? That crashed pretty hard and then it bounced. Will it, will it take that long to bounce? I don't know, man. I, I really don't know, but it's one of those things we have to wait and see if it even happens, if it even happens, if it does, it explains a lot about what's going on with cryptos. A lot of them came out at the top. You can't read them, probably all going to zero. Bitcoin doesn't look like it's going to go to zero, um, but a lot of these might. Um, we'd have to just keep an eye on it as we go along, and I will do that. Thanks for watching.